All right, I'm Officer Stu with the California Patrol. I'm in my 27th year in law enforcement. Uh, we have, I've worked uh, jointly with pretty much every agency that's here in some capacity or other, whether it's a homicide, whether it's a, a simple traffic stop. Uh, oh, it's, uh oh, we gotta stop. Yeah, it's going a little fast. <laughs> wow. Do we have sound in here? Jeff, do we have sound, do you know? No, no, should be. This is very similar to Deputy Calderon's uh, presentation as far as the uh, documentation being truthful. Uh, the steps are very similar. Uh, your, the ultimate, uh, I've worked in the capacity of a background. Uh, just to give you a background officer, so uh, I do the same process as a Deputy Calderon. But uh, in general, I'll just give you an idea of what I'm probably an anomaly because I'm not from California. Uh, originally, I'm from Colorado. Uh, I grew up on a little farm. I graduated from a high school that had 72 graduates. And so, uh, college back in those days in uh, the early, uh, late 70s wasn't always something everybody considered. They considered it a job. And I, I was, at the time when I graduated, I was working on a farm, herding cattle, riding horses, and uh, driving a tractor back and forth on a field. Now that's, that's pretty mundane, and it's not very exciting, and I... I don't uh, be able to give you sound, I apologize. All right. Uh, we'll, uh, Which may be just as well, because we're running short of time. Maybe. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, basically, I don't, uh, I have some college. Uh, my first choice was the United States Navy, which I did five years in there, and as an 18, 19 year old, uh, I wanted to be a doctor because I cared about people. And then uh, I had a teacher said I could be either a police officer or a doctor because he said uh, based on my character. And so I went with the medical field and I uh, went into the military as a doctor and at 19, 18, 19, 20 years old, I'm jumping out of helicopters, rescuing uh, Marines. Army personnel and providing first aid, uh, setting fractures, heat stroke, snake bite victims, and uh, that's that's the direction I was heading. I went through uh, San Diego to to uh, Balboa Hospital to uh, become a become a doctor eventually. Uh, at that point, I was uh, in San Diego and I got stopped by a highway patrolman, uh, a lieutenant on a motorcycle. And I didn't, I didn't know they rode motorcycles. And to this day, I don't think they do now. But back then, he was on his motorcycle in his shiny boots, and he stopped me for speeding. And uh, when he stopped me, the way he talked to me, the way he, he was very respectful, very professional. And that, uh, at that point, I considered the highway, the highway patrol. And here I am, a little kid from Colorado. So uh, I put in my application process and uh, asked questions. I looked into the Highway Patrol, I researched it very thoroughly, and I really liked their uh, benefits, the retirement program, the job itself. Um, as a, as a, uh, right now, my captain is my classmate. I'm still an officer. I have more hair than he does. Uh, I love being outside. I've never wanted to promote. Uh, they've encouraged me to promote many times because of my background and my expertise in a lot of many fields. Uh, I, I choose to, I'm happy working out in the field, contacting people, going to accident scenes, and uh, interacting with the, uh, the public. I don't want to be an, an administration person in an office. I just can't do it. It's just not my nature. So that's, that's where I'm at 27 years later. Uh, <coughs> I've worked uh, with DOJ, raiding marijuana gardens up north in Humboldt, hanging out of helicopters again. Uh, Testified. I'm a drug expert, so I've testified in many court cases, uh, significant, uh, some on some involving uh, manslaughter. <coughs> Just uh, you can do a lot of things in the Highway Patrol statewide. You don't have to be in uh, Santa Barbara. You can be in San Diego. I've worked in New Hall. I've worked in Sa uh, Sacramento, and I've worked in Ventura County, and then I've worked in here in Santa Barbara, and then I've worked with, like I said, multiple agencies. Uh, as far as uh, the job requirements, 
Uh, it's a dangerous job, as, as well as these other agencies. Uh, when you start out, you're the you're the you're in the field. You're contacting public, whether it's in in, in most cases, uh, other than a fire department, you're contacting somebody regarding laws, and then you're enforcing them. So it's a negative job in some aspects. So uh, it's not always the most pleasant experience. I have four teenage children or teenagers, and uh, when they were small and in their in the in uh, sixth fifth sixth grade, they wanted me to become their little show and tell object. And I'd come to the school. Everybody loved me. Uh, the kids wanted to be handcuffed, which I never did. I just didn't like <laughs> that. Uh, they want to crawl through the patrol car. Okay, I, I'd give my speeches. Um, as my daughter got into high school, she wanted she did reports on the highway patrol and the history of the highway patrol. And uh, I would come to the classes and explain to them driving under the influence, talk to them about that kind of stuff. And uh, they loved me. But then uh, when they turned to high school, I would, they'd never bring that subject up again. So their <laughs> attitudes kind of changed. So I would come up to them and say, hey, do you want me to come into your class? And they'd say, oh, dad, <laughs> don't even go near our high school. And so you, know, you, have to, you have to endure those kind of changes in your life. Uh, you're held to a higher standard, which these guys have all emphasized, that uh, truthfulness. Uh, you, have to, you, you have to base your job on principles. You have policies. Uh, when you do stop your mother, it's a good idea to call another officer over who's more objective so, you're, so that there's some, some impartiality as far as decision making on what it involves. What's the issue? Uh, same goes with speeding. If I stop somebody that's very angry and upset, I'll call a partner over as an officer who may have a, a, a demeanor that may be more appealing to the person to talk to and explain to them the circumstances. So we're a very public oriented agency. Uh, our primary job is unincorporated areas and patrolling the highways. Anything unincorporated, uh, two-lane highways to freeways, and our job is to get you safely from point A to point B, and whatever happens in between, that's when we come into uh, play. And we work with fire departments, sheriff departments. Uh, I've been involved in probably about 55, 60 pursuits. Uh, they've been high speed, they've been dangerous. I've never had to draw my, I draw my, I draw my gun pretty much regularly. I've never had to shoot it. I've never had to use, my, we carry a baton, I've never had to use that on anybody. I've been able to use uh, what we term verbal judo and talk them into cooperating and explain to them, be understanding of the circumstances because everybody's life's different. You don't know how these, everybody's grown up. So there's a lot, of, there's a lot involved in uh, being in law enforcement from a psychological standpoint to a uh, physical standpoint where you want to be in shape so that you don't, uh, so you don't give the impression that you can be overtaken. Uh, I'll sh this uh, CD is about two minutes long. It, sh it basically has interviews with uh, other cadets or cadets and new officers in the past three to five years. Uh, we're always hiring. Uh, we have an academy up at Sacramento in West Sacramento. It's the only academy in the state, and you're allowed to go and tour it if you'd like. It has a museum. Uh, we have a full-blown race track where they train you to drive, which is one of your uh, most important issues on the highway patrol. Every highway patrolman I think I've ever met could probably be a NASCAR driver. <laughs> They're really good, and uh, they teach you on that track to drive, male or female. We've had women go up there that can't drive, that come out of there overturning their cars and wrecking out in the track, and they still graduate and go on to be highway patrolmen. The whole idea is to get through it and be persistent and persevere the stress under it. It's a live-in academy. It's 27 weeks long. Uh, you take uh, approximately uh, 160 exams. Uh, the instructors are really good. Uh, as, as after you graduate from the academy, you have a year probation at, a, at, a, at an office, and you go through 45 days. It took me two years to get on the department from the, uh, from the day I turned in my application. And I almost gave up several times. I almost gave up and said, you know what, maybe law enforcement's not meant for me, but two years is a long time to wait. And then finally, <laughs> I was looking at other, other types of uh, opportunities in, in the in, you know, employment world. And I was looking back into the medical field when suddenly they sent me a letter and said, hey, congratulations, we want you to go to the academy. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, two years later, I get to go. Well, that two years, if I can just, touch on base that that one day I, I remember so vividly right now getting that letter 
And then within a week showing up to the academy, uh, I can still remember that day to this day. That's how much fun I've had and how much time has flown 27 years later. I still remember that day very vividly. And uh, I can think back of all the, there's been a lot of sad things in, in the highway patrol from when you respond to accidents. Uh, you, you spend a lot of times you're there first, you're a first responder, you're on scene. Sometimes before the, uh, your emergency personnel, such as firemen, and you have to provide first aid and people die in front of you. So you have that emotional aspect to deal with. Uh, I have six partners that have sit in a car next to it that, were, that are no longer with me. They've been killed and hit by drivers, drunk drivers. And uh, they currently, you know, God bless them. I hope they're up there. Uh, but that's part of the job. So that's when you're considering this kind of a job. It's a dangerous job. and. Uh, there's a lot of rewarding issues. I mean, I've got pictures with Obama, with Obama and I, uh, Bush and I, so I'm kind of impartial that way. So <laughs> I put both pictures up so that my family side that's Republican and my family side is uh, Democrat don't get too excited. But uh, I've been on uh, protective services details where you protect uh, a dignitary of, you know, uh, from a foreign country. Uh, we have motorcycles, we have uh, civilians that can be dispatchers. Uh, there's all, sometimes we have officers that go through the academy who do not graduate, that can't perform to standards required. And uh, our department and the state's really good at trying to find another civilian job position for them to take, uh, maybe along the lines of law enforcement. So uh, it's a, it's a, we're, we're about 6,000 strong uniformed employees and about another 2,000 uh, non-uniformed. The department's really self-contained uh, as far as uh, if, you, if, if you get into, if you, if you, if you have an interest in math, uh, we have uh, reconstruction experts and they'll actually send a highway patrolman to Northwest University to their uh, reconstruction uh, program and it's paid for. Uh, but you, of course you have to show the interest and the desire when you become a law enforcement person, but it's, it's all there and uh, like I said, you only need a high school diploma or GED, uh, and, and you have to turn 21 before you graduate from the academy. So you can be young. We've had a few 21-year-olds, and they get uh, they come out of the department and they look young. They look like <laughs> the guns as big as they are, you know. It's just, and they've got these big grins, and they look so young. It's just, uh, but it's it's good. Uh, we have guys that come on that are, that, that are plumbers that have been, that are 35 years old that just make it to the academy and they've been a plumber their whole life. So we take uh, anybody from all walks of life. But like I said, the, the most important part is you're honest. Uh, what was brought up earlier was your associations. If you, uh, if you live with a uh, parent or relative or an uncle that's a known felon that uh, was uh, possession of methamphetamine or selling it, you won't become a highway patrolman if you live with that person. So you have to disassociate with the, the criminal element of your life, not that they're bad people, but in order you, for, for you to perform in the capacity of a law enforcement person. And uh, if you understand history about the highway patrol, an interesting fact is when we had the Watts riots, the highway patrol was on the very beginning of that because we, uh, we made a traffic stop on the, the person that resulted in led to the Watts riots. And then the same with the Rodney King issue. Uh, Rodney King won, the Highway Patrol was stopped somebody. So uh, we seem to be involved uh, in a lot of, everybody uses a car or a mode of transportation around, even criminals. So we tend to arrest a lot of felons. And uh, it's always uh, through, through the traffic enforcement stop. So I'll be around afterwards. Uh, there's a brochure up here that talks about the pay. Uh, it's self-explanatory talks about the different areas in California and the divisions you can work. And then there's uh, actual applications if you're interested. Uh, the next point where we, the academy's always running. Uh, right now we're putting through about 80 classes. When I went through the academy, we had 127 applicants. Uh, my class had 15,000 applicants back in 1970, uh, 1984, 80, 83. <coughs> And out of that 15,000 applicants, it resulted in 127 people going to the academy. Out of that 127 in our My Academy class, only 72 of us graduated. So the uh, rate of uh, graduation about 50% or maybe even less sometimes. But 
it's difficult. So uh, they try to put a lot of stress on you because when you go out and uh, respond to emergency situations in, in conjunction, you might be working with sheriff deputies, backing them up in uh, hostile situations. So you have to keep a level head. So that's one thing you really have to think about yourself, your own temperament in dealing with uh, angry people and how you would handle yourself out there. So I'd always have to be uh, very professional. So that's it for me. And like I said, I got handouts here.